I know there's been a mention some of you wanted programs so you could name everything in your folder. You, know, you needed that for websites, for your for your music, or for your pictures or whatever. Well, actually, here's a very neat, and quick way of doing that. Instead of paying all that money, you just you just go up into your folder. You hit Control A for all. You're gonna right click it. Go to rename. Now select whatever you want. So see here, it's music, and it's no particular group. So I'm just gonna put songs. And that's it. And what's going to happen now, everything else will be named songs, but it's going to be in an order, obviously. So zero being just songs. There you go. One, two, three, four, right straight through. So instead of going and spending $30, $40 for that program, which I'm familiar about, you just do it this way, and it's all done in literally in a few seconds. Next, I'm going to show you how to get your file extension to show. You're going to go over here to Control Panel. Folder Options. And go over to where it says View. Scroll down, and where it says Hide Extensions for Known File Types, you are going to uncheck that. You don't have to restart the computer. Hit apply. That's pretty much it. Hit OK. And as I'm going to show you, I did not show you. I did that wrong. It's over here. Okay, see? Everything's here. The file extensions for everything. Now that was easy. Next, I'm going to show you how to back up your registry from the changes that you make to it. Alrighty. It's actually relatively simple. Assuming you know where you're going, and you should. If you don't, you shouldn't be in the registry. So basically, you click on the area that you're going to be in. And for me, it's Windows Title. You go up here to where it says File. You select Export. And what you're going to be doing after you do this, when you select Export and where it's going to go, you're going to be storing this or it's going to be an original form. Just name it whatever. I named it Windows Title.reg and I put it in my reg order, reg edit tutorial box. Now notice here you can under the bottom where it says all or selected branch. Now usually you don't want to back up your whole registry. It takes some time and it gets very confusing for your guys and if there's other changes that occurred and you can really screw shit up for yourself. So basically make sure it's at selected branch because that's where you're going to be at. And as I said, you can name it whatever you want, but make sure you remember what it is. And because it is the Windows title, I'm going to name it Windows title and dot reg. That's going to do that by itself. And that's pretty much how you back up your registry. I know it was very simple. Next, you're going to learn how to change the icons and anything you want. As again, it's relatively simple. You go up to your object, whatever it may be, right click it, and go to the properties. And usually, there's an area in properties for icon, whether it's sometimes it's under advanced, mind you. And what you do is you go to change icon. Now, there's only one here, which you guys can't see right now. You can see part of it. I can't move the screen over. Well, you're going to be able to see because that's not there. All right, here you go. There's only one, so I want more. So then what you're going to do is you're going to browse. I have folders and folders and folders of them, so I'm not going to go through and show you. But basically, you can go anywhere in your computer, pick an icon, and you can select it for the object. And that's how you change your icons, and that's very easy to do, and people make it sound complicated. But that's all, that's all you have to do. It's rather simple. I'm sorry if you keep hearing that, but it is. Speaking of changing the icons, some of you guys don't even know how to find them in your computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. You go to search. And most of you guys have your windows in the C folder. So up here, you want to type in star, asterisk, whatever, dot ICO. And hit search. This is how you're going to find them all on your computer. Basically, you see one you want, you copy and paste it to another folder, or you can do the method I showed you with properties and find it that way manually if you'd like. But this, you know, this is the easiest way to get it. And there's 
probably hundreds of them in your computer. So I sorry I didn't mention that before. Another thing that's mentioned that allowed you to lose your sound and you have gone through the properties and have found that you've had volume and nothing's on mute and you're at lost here. Well, the best way to actually do this is you're going to uh, gonna, gonna go into control panel. And of course, oh sorry. As I said, control panel. And you're going to go over to system. Hardware and device manager. Next, you want to make sure everything's in order here. There's no question marks or anything's out of sync. So I'm going to go down here to sounds. Okay, everything you have appears to be fine here. Sometimes you see a yellow question mark. Other times you'll see nothing. But the best thing to do, honestly, is to right click, scan for hardware changes. Or you can go through and delete these if you want. They'll come back. <laughs> don't don't worry about it. They'll come back. And what happens when you restart your computer, it'll say that it's noticed that there's a hardware change and you'll have your drivers back. Now this is fine and uh, I wouldn't do this in Windows 98 or 95, but this is fine for Windows XP. Another thing I wanted to concentrate on was some of the more stupider questions that I've gotten in Yahoo Answers and people have actually replied to this and fell for the question and I'm not going to fall for it guys, I'm sorry. Well, for instance, I'll get something saying, oh I deleted calculator in, in System 32 or in system folder, whatever, and deleted, uh, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but this is what's going to happen, <laughs> this is actually quite funny, this is what's going to happen when you delete it in Windows, it won't happen, oh no, I'm sorry guys, I was wrong about that, see, now I just, I just misled you guys, I feel really bad about this, so unfortunate, it just came back, and you did not delete it, yes, you guys, it just happened right in front of you, so please, think a little bit, before you ask. Alright, next, when you have a problem on your computer, a lot of you guys are also looking for the logs, or you have problems on your computer and you can't find out the source of it. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Control Panel, you're going to open up Administrative Tools, and you're going to select Event Viewer, and it's going to open up this little dialog box here called Event Viewer. Now, if it's based on applications, you're going to see the errors. It doesn't matter, antivirus, Internet Explorer, so on and so forth. I just happen to have application errors myself. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to select it, and you're going to read the information on that. And that's how you get to your logs and find out what's really clicking on your computer. And it's very resolvable from that point on. And it doesn't leave nothing out, so don't think anything you do is not going to show. It will show in here. It's a rather informative tool to have. Right, that concludes this. All right, and then the final rendezvous you and I are going to have together is how to capture your screen. A lot of guys don't know how to capture the screen images. It doesn't matter if there's a video on your screen or what. If you want what's on your screen, now this is just to illustrate your keyboard here, and it's spelt a little different. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to go up to a print screen that's PSC up here on the on-screen keyboard. It'll say PRNTSCRN or even print screen outright on your upper right hand side as you can see on your keyboard. Now next, after you do that, you're going to go over to paint and then you're just simply going to paste it in and you'll have your, your entire screen and that's fairly, it's all you got to do guys. You don't have to hit a function key or nothing, just as I said, print screen and paste it in paint and you're done.